Welcome back to the Berean Preterists. My name is Richard Eckhart. Today is September 15th, 2019. There's something that I wanted to point out as it concerns the core heretical doctrine of covenant eschatology, corporate body view preterism that both William Bell and Don K. Preston are teaching. If you take a look at this chart behind me, we can see that there is this idea that there is a mortal flesh body out from Adam. Uh, this rectangle that we see right here, this larger rectangle, is allegedly uh, out from Adam, and Adam brings forth this alleged body of people uh, represented with this body right here, with Adam being the sort of spiritual federal representative head of this body. Now, out from this group of people, which William Bell and Don K. Preston are calling a mortal flesh body, a corporate mortal flesh body, all of these people, uh, William Bell and Don K. Preston teach that this body came out from this body. Now, you could take a look at this body right here. This body allegedly represents Israel. And is, uh, these guys would say that this is the household of Israel. This rectangle, you see this lar uh, smaller rectangle out from this larger rectangle, Allegedly, this group of people came out from this group of people, and this group of people is the body of Moses or Israel. And the core heretical teaching in covenant eschatology, corporate body view preterism, is this little chunk of time right here. This is a 40-year process, allegedly. It is a 40-year dying and rising bodily exchange. Now, the, the guy who created covenant eschatology is Max King, and Max King devised that 40-year uh, dying and rising bodily exchange process, uh, and he coined the term dying, rising reciprocity. So allegedly, there is a body, a, a mortal flesh body that brings forth this body, and, you know, you can see right here where it says, uh, it says, the old man crucified with Christ. And I have some question marks right here. So I have an arrow pointing at this body, and I have an arrow pointing at this body. So that's one thing I would like for William Bell and Don K. Preston to address, because when Paul is teaching what the flesh is, uh, Paul's not talking about some corporate mortal flesh body. When you read Galatians 2.20 or Colossians 2.13 or Romans 6, 7, and 8, William Bell and Don K. Preston try and teach you that Paul is somehow trying to allude to a corporate body that needs to be crucified with Christ and then go through this 40-year, uh, allegedly a 40-year dying and rising bodily exchange so that some corporate body of old covenant death or old creation death or old heaven and earth death needs to rise in AD 70 as a corporate body of, of the new covenant or uh, the new creation or the new heaven and earth. They say, that, they say that this body right down here, you got Christ as a spiritual representative head of this body, but these guys are teaching that this body was this body. So this body allegedly had to be crucified with Christ in order to raise as a spirit body of Christ. No. You read Galatians 2.20. Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. William Bell and Don K. Preston will try and teach you that Paul is alluding to some corporate flesh here that needed to be crucified with Christ, some, some old man. Now, whether they're talking about this old man right here or this old man right here, I'm not sure. I think, it's, I think their old man is the old man Adam as a federal representative head as a, uh, of a corporate mortal flesh body right here because the sin, they would say the sin and the death is out from Adam. So it would seem to me that this, this man right here would allegedly have to go through this alleged 40-year process. But Paul's not talking about, he's not giving code language for some corporate body, Israel, right? That's what William Bell and Don K. Preston teach. They, they teach that uh, there's some type of 
corporate body of Israel that is being raised over this 40-year process. So the, the confusion becomes, is it a corporate body of Israel or is it a corporate body of Adam? Now, J.L. Vaughn and Tim Martin, they saw that, they saw that problem of Max King and William Bell and Don K. Preston, and they made, they made this spiritual federal rep representative head of this body right here with Adam, the beginning of Adam to bring forth this body, J.L. Vaughn and Tim Martin in Covenant Creation say that this rectangle up here is Israel because they say Adam was the first Israelite. They teach that Adam was the first uh, Israelite in the beginning among millions or millions or billions of people that were living and dying, allegedly, prior to Adam. Uh, so they say that there was only pagan people in pagan nations up until the God of the Bible decided that he would write a book all about Israel and Adam was the first Israelite. And they say that's, that's what the Bible is about, the salvation of Israel. So J.L. Vaughn and Tim Martin and all the other guys who are covenant creation corporate body of you preterists, like Michael Miano and Ward Fenley and Tony Denton and Steve Baisden, all of these guys look at this rec rectangle as Israel so that when you get to the alleged uh, death of Christ, they say that this body had to be crucified with Christ in an alleged spiritual alienation death, by the way. This corporate body view nonsense is, is heresy upon heresy upon heresy. Now, William Bell and Don K. Preston, they hedged their bets, I think. They might be covenant creation, but they try and appeal to all kinds of people. So they say that out from this body, which is the sin and the death, they say that this is the flesh location or the flesh realm or the flesh sphere. They say that this body was out from this body. And they say that this body needed to go through this 40 year exchange process. And this body, which is Israel, allegedly is raised as a spirit body of an ethereal spirit Christ entity, which is another story because they say that the biological, physical flesh body of their false Jesus Christ was divested and destroyed and burned up when Jesus ascended, when their Jesus ascended into heaven. And William Bell and Don K. Preston teach that their false Jesus Christ put off his humanity and he became God. This, this alleged spirit Christ that showed up on earth for 30 or so years in a borrowed biological, physical flesh body, allegedly put off being God to hang out on earth for 30 or so years to change back into this spirit Christ entity. And then when you look at this head down here, allegedly this head is this body, which the heretics in covenant eschatology and covenant creation say was this body. They say that this body changed into this body. Or in the case of William Bell and Don K. Preston, they say that this body changed into this body. So is it confusing? I wish it wasn't so confusing, but you read, you read scripture like Galatians 2.20 or I'll read Colossians 2.13. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Now Paul is talking to individuals but not to William Bell and Don K. Preston. This is code language for those guys. They have Paul talking to Israel as a corporate body, right? Right here. So when you hear flesh, these guys have code language for either one of these bodies. They have, they have from, from Adam to AD 70 as the realm of the flesh or the location of the flesh or the sphere of the flesh. And when you read Romans 6, 7, and 8, probably my all-time favorite a larger passage of scripture, I must have read it 200 times in the first year that I was saved, along with all of Romans. I, I, I love Romans. Uh, when, you look, when you look at Romans, William Bell and Don K. Preston corporatize, collectivize, if you will, the flesh. So in Romans 6, 7, and 8, they, they say that Paul is speaking in code once again. 
for a corporate body Israel that needs to be going through a 40-year dying and rising process with their false Jesus Christ, their spirit Christ entity, who is having a spirit body form, right? This is the spirit body allegedly, and this spirit body is allegedly forming out from this flesh body so that people who are in the flesh body can be in the spirit body. They can go from being allegedly in the flesh realm into the spirit realm. Listen, if you are a born-again Christian today, you must contend with your personal flesh to the day you are done here on earth. That's the way it goes. In the same way that Christ suffered and he was perfected through his sufferings, each and every individual Christ Christian will need to suffer. There's no way around it. You're going to contend with your flesh, and it sucks. But William Bell and Don, Don K. Preston will say, you don't got to contend with your flesh. You can claim heaven now. They say that heaven is on earth in this spirit body, and they teach, you just got to get assimilated into this spirit body. Once you get assimilated in this spirit body, you don't got to worry about being in, in any type of flesh realm. You, the, the corporate body they teach, this, this corporate body of flesh was crucified with Christ. And you just need to mentally ascend. You need to have an intellectual understanding that this corporate body was crucified with Christ and became a spirit body. And you need to be assimilated into this spirit body now that is ever present, allegedly since AD 70. It was manifest on earth as the new creation or the new heaven and earth or the new covenant. No. So I wanted to show you this chart. Maybe we will go over it some more. Uh, but you read Romans 6, 7, and 8. Paul is not speaking in code for a corporate body Israel. Uh, Romans 6, 7, and 8 is beautiful. And Paul is speaking, you know, Paul's giving a personal testimony in Romans 7, how he, even though he has been crucified with Christ, has been, uh, he has been placed in Christ in the propitiation death of Jesus, which is his biological, physical, flesh, body, death, even though Paul knows that he is crucified with Christ, Paul is giving a clear reference in Romans 7 that he still contends with his personal flesh. It is not code language for some type of corporate body Israel that is going through a 40-year process. You know, these, uh, William Bell and Don K. Preston say that the only time the miraculous regenerating and renewing work of God the Holy Spirit was present is during this 40-year process so that this body can change into this body down here. That's what they teach. They don't teach that God the Holy Spirit comes to dwell personally in people today. They say, you just need to understand that this body changed into this body in the first century, and now this body is present, and when you get assimilated into this body, you're in the fullness of the Godhead bodily, right? That's what they teach. They teach the Godhead bodily is in this body right here. It really is some wicked stuff. And they have to conjure up a false Jesus Christ in, in order to make this whole scheme work. I wish it wasn't so tedious to have to go through this. I'm an individual body view preterist, and I wish there was an easier way to talk about a, an orthodox view of Christian soteriology for individuals who get placed in the personal death of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, his propitiation death, which is his biological, physical, flesh, body death. And I want to tell you that the literal blood that was shed for the literal taking away of literal sin on the cross is as effective today as it was the very day that it was shed. The literal blood of Jesus saved Luke and James and John and Peter and Paul and that literal blood that was shed for the taking away of sin on the cross is saving people today. It is just as effectual as it was 2,000 years ago when it was shed. William Bell and Don K. Preston spit on the literal physical blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. They spit on the means of the atonement. Thanks for watching. Again, I wish, I wish that it was not so tedious to go through all of this to expose the heresy and blasphemy in covenant eschatology, corporate body view preterism that William Bell and Don K. Preston are teaching, along with all of their lackeys and minions. Steve Bazden, Holger Neubauer, Roy Runyon, 
John Watson, Daniel Rogers, Michael Miano, Ward Fenley, Mike Sullivan, Micah Stevens, most uh, fool preterists that you end up watching their videos or having a dialogue with are in the covenant eschatology cult and they teach this heretical paradigm. And the core, the core heretical teaching is right here, this 40 year dying and rising bodily exchange that they say is this little chunk of time right here. This does not exist in the Bible. But most of these guys that you end up seeing their videos, they are in the covenant eschatology cult that is out from the teachings of one man. And that man's name is Max King, out from the 1970s and 1980s. He's still alive. He's 89 years old. He embraced a radical new age uh, mysticism. He's into just, he's gone. He's gone with a, a, a new age, a universal reconciliation. Uh, him and his son who now runs his ministry. Uh, this is a cult. This, this whole scheme right here is a cult. Be blessed in the name of God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that if you are not saved, if you are not personally placed in the personal death of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have never come to see your personal condition, your personal death and your personal corruption, the implications of your personal flesh. I need to tell you that you will never earn God's grace. You cannot save yourself. But when somebody ministers the gospel to you, the gospel of God's son in his propitiation death on the cross, when somebody ministers the gospel to you and you consider your own personal condition before a holy, righteous, and just God, that will pour out daily, minute by minute. It is God's very essence and character to not tolerate death and corruption and sin. Praise God that Jesus dealt with it on the cross. But God will not tolerate death, corruption, and sin. If you see your personal condition, I pray that in your time of need, you cry out to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is not... Um, a, 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 a disembodied spirit entity that is ever present everywhere. No, the Lord Jesus Christ is a human being in heaven with his own personal, spiritual, glorified body. He's still a human being. When he became a human being in the miraculous conception in the womb of Mary, he did not stop being a human being when he ascended into glory in heaven. So I pray that you cry out to the real deal, Jesus Christ, and please watch these heretics and all of their uh, peculiar definitions that they have that are out from Christian rhetoric. These guys are liars. They're deceivers. They are snakes. They are wolves in sheepskin. It's true. Peace to you in the name of God the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, I do pray that the love of God falls mightily through the regenerating and renewing work and power of God, the Holy Spirit, in your life, in your personal life. Peace.